Hi everybody, this is Chris from Falgar Productions, and we're doing a new line of videos today, kicking off a new review series. Now, I've done review series in the past, but I'm going to try to standardize my review process um, and start drawing from, well, I'm a high school teacher, and I often, when I grade things, I'm grading them on kind of the traditional American A, B, C, D, F system. So I've decided to take that and make a little bit of a rubric when I'm grading miniatures. And because I'm known for 10 millimeter, this will most be, be looking at 10 millimeter. I'm going to kick off which with not my very first 10 millimeter army. I actually don't have that anymore. That was Pendragon's uh, Punic Wars, Romans, and Carthaginians. This is my second 10 millimeter army. And this is uh, 1066 Stamford Bridge and Hastings by 3D Breed. And there's gonna be a link down in the description below. Um, now, these are not painted for historical use. I actually painted these to be my Rohirrim. Um, I kind of 3D printed them, left them in a box for a while, and then decided, you know what? Lord of the Rings is great, and went off in that direction. Um, hence, a lot of green, because the Rohirrim in the movie wore a lot of green. Um, and so going over the categories of ru the rubric, there are going to be four sometimes a miscellaneous fifth category, um, and those are going to be weighted. And I'm going to be grading them uh, with an A, meaning the, that that category is great. Uh, B is good. C is okay. It's kind of average. It's fine. Uh, D is there's some significant flaws. And then F is, of course, a fail. There's just something about them that I, I wouldn't want to use. I will occasionally offer an A plus for just absolutely over the top amazing. Doesn't need to be flawless or perfect, but somehow going above and beyond a normal A for great. Uh, the categories are going to be, and the biggest one, quality of sculpts. 40% of that grade is going to be quality of sculpts. And so if we look at these 3D breed, um, I have my Norman Knights here as a really great example. I give these a solid B for quality of sculpts. There's good variety of the sculpts. It's not an army of clones. Um, but it is a bit hard to tell the difference between figures that are supposed to be Vikings, Anglo-Saxons, and Normans. Now, the fact that I painted them all in the same color scheme does not help, but this is the Dark Ages. There is going to be a lot of the same colors, and even if you paint the shields differently, if you're looking at them from above, you're mostly going to see helmets and spears. So the one here on the left, these are the Normans. The one here on the right, these are the Anglo-Saxons. I don't have Vikings printed. Really, the only difference between the Vikings and the Anglo-Saxons is the Vikings have a mix of uh, spears and hand weapons and um, less helmets, but still some helmets. Um, it, it's gonna be kind of hard to tell the difference between. Uh, it's a lot of kind of generic spearmen. And again, this is the dark ages, I get that. Um, the only one that really stands out is these Anglo-Saxon Huskarls. Um, and kind of oddly, they come in strips and all the strips of the infantry are six, except the Huskarls, which are seven. Uh, and they're kind of crammed closer together, which is literally something I never noticed until today. It's kind of weird. Um, so I'm going to give these a solid B for the quality of sculpts. Uh, my second category is going to be A, uh, is going to be cost, and that is 20%. Uh, and as I just slipped up there, I said these are going to be an A. Uh, now these are 3D printed, but the cost of that 3D print for the entire package is 30 euros, which is pretty incredible. Now, no 3D print is ever going to get an A plus from me unless they're absolutely free. Um, and that's mostly just because the cost of 3D printing. Um, I have a 3D printer. I love my 3D printer, but it's not free and not everyone can really afford that startup. But for 30 pounds, uh, sorry, 30 euros, you get um, you get Duke William, uh, you get Harold Hardrada, you get uh, King Harold Godwinson, uh, and then you get the Viking warriors, the Anglo-Saxon warriors, the Norman foot infantry, the Norman knights, um, and archers, and then the Anglo-Saxon huskarls. And the archers are kind of generic. You can use them for um, any of the sides. There are no crossbowmen um, for the Vikings. I don't think there were a lot of crossbowmen in that era, but that would have been something nice to see. But still, cost, solid, A. Uh, cleanup and assembly. Now, this is going to be a category... Uh, that's 20%, and it is going to be a little bit different depending on whether it's a 3D print or it is a physical metal miniature. Uh, for an example, here I have some um, Pendragon um, Ancients. They're part of a chariot team, and obviously I didn't have to 3D print these. There's no supports I have to clean up, but sometimes there's some flashing or sanding I have to do. With the 3D prints, uh, you can't see the supports because obviously these are done and printed, but I had to remove the supports. Uh, and also print them. How easy was that? 
unfortunately, I'm going to be giving the 3D Breed Tiny Epic Battles a D. And that's really for one not fatal flaw, but a major flaw. And that is some of the strips have a lack of supports that when you put them in, it'll look like they're printing fine. And then part of the bow will just not be there. And you'll see all these bows are here because I had to go in and I had to fix that after I'd already printed an entire plate full of these. And that was a huge pain in the butt. Um, it was the same with some of the horses. Again, you won't see it here because I fixed them, but some of them just like one of the legs didn't print because the supports failed. And it wasn't user error because it would be the same strip multiple times. The leg just wouldn't print. It was a problem with the STL I had to fix manually. Um, now, other than that, and that's a pretty significant flaw. If I have pre-supported files, I want them to print. Um, everything else was pretty good, but unfortunately that is a pretty significant flaw and that's going to give it a D on the cleanup and assembly. Now for paintability, that's the last 20%. Um, that's a solid A. These are the kinds of minis that I really like. They have details, but not too many details. Uh, you can see I didn't paint the reins on these because, well, to be perfectly honest, this was only my second 10 millimeter army um, and I've come a long way since then, but there's a good amount of detail. There's not too much detail. Uh, these figures are uh, more of a heroic um, proportions rather than realistic. So it gives them a lot. Uh, it's really easy to see some of the details. For example, here are some uh, other Rohirrim I'm using now. They're from Cromarty Forge, and you can see significantly smaller heads, uh, smaller hands compared to the um, the 3D Breed figures, and they're a little shorter, a little shorter. In fact, I usually upscale my Cromarty figures by just a little bit. Um, these are almost exactly 10 millimeter to the eye. It looks like they're a little shorter, but that's just because basing is keeping my ruler a little too high. Um, but they are a true 10 millimeter scale. They're just a little on the chunky side, but paintability, solid A. Now that is, if you've been following along, quality of sculpts is 40%, cost is 20%, cleanup assembly is 20%, paintability is 20%, that's 100%. And normally I'm going to stop there, but every once in a while, if I feel like I need to throw something in there, I'm going to throw a 10% miscellaneous in there, making the total 110%, and then instead of figuring out my average using 100 um, as the uh, the bottom of that fraction, the denominator, uh, I'll use 110. Uh, for my miscellaneous here, I am going to use it, and it is going to be another D, because when I deal with 3D prints, um, especially in 10 millimeter, often they will come in strips, kind of as a legacy of War Master, I think, where there's six figures here, but they're not six individual figures. They're all literally one singular sculpt of these six figures. You see that now in the um, the uh, Warlord Games um, epic scale, uh, where they have an entire strip of 10 figures. The only singles that come in this pack are uh, the King of the Anglo-Saxons, um, uh, Godwinson, uh, and uh, Harold Hardrada, uh, who I don't have printed here, and um, William the Conqueror, William the Bastard, right here. Those are the only singles. Everything else comes in strips, including the cavalry. Pretty much everything out there that I'm aware of when it comes to 10 millimeter, 99%, you get strips and singles. For example, these Cromarty Forge figures come in... Um, actually, the Cromarty Forge cavalry only come in singles, um, but... Uh, here's another example of Forest Dragon. This comes as both a strip of their archers, but also a single, which I used as a little archer hero. Um, this only comes in strips. So if you wanted to not have seven in a row, you only wanted five in a row. If you wanted to use this for 10 millimeter skirmish, or if you want to scale it up to 15 millimeter um, and do some skirmish with it, you can't. And so I'm going to throw that in as a miscellaneous. I would have rather spent 40 euro and gotten the strips and the singles instead of 30 euro and only gotten the strips. It would have made them a lot more versatile. Um, I'm not unhappy with it. Miscellaneous is only worth 10%, which technically when you do the math, it's more like 8-ish percent. Um, but with all that, these still get a pretty good score. So we have quality of sculpts is a B, cost is an A, cleanup assembly is a D, paintability is an A, and miscellaneous is a D. Averaging out to a solid 83%, that's a B. These are pretty good miniatures. I'm absolutely happy with them. Um, they have some flaws, but they're not fatal flaws. And of course, quality of sculpts being a B is really the majority. Well, not the majority, but the plurality, the biggest portion of the review. 
So that's the first, this is going to be the first review of many. I've got a whole backlog of 10 millimeter that I'm going to be doing some reviews of from a variety of different manufacturers. Um, and then I've also got some uh, special 10 millimeter plastics on the way, which I'm really looking forward to looking at. But I'm, the, my reviews are going to come out not immediately after something comes out because A, I'm going to have to buy it. Um, but B, also, I'm not going to review something until I've painted, maybe not quite as much as this, but a good amount. If you have any questions, drop them down in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and have a good rest of your day.